Now that Etchell has been out long enough to do all the math, let's talk about what the best in-game teams look like for Frisha Hush. Since Hush scales primarily on ultimate energy, her first support is always going to be Tess the Magician. We're going to look at three options for her second support today. Acacia Kaguya, Moksha Shadow Ka, and Echo the Cup. We'll evaluate them based on how long it takes to start beaming, how long their buffs last, and how hard it is to build them. First up, Kaguya. Kaguya only needs to toss out her support skill to complete her job. It's very quick. With most bosses, you need to delay Lasting Flame by about 2 seconds to ensure they die before you run out of energy, and Kaguya finishes well within that window. Kaguya's support skill lasts for 10 seconds at first and is extended to 12 seconds at Manifestation 3. Since Lasting Flame does more damage the longer it lasts, Adding 2 seconds of uptime is a significant increase in damage. However, it doesn't last long enough to kill most bosses before it ends, which leads to a major damage drop and can result in longer clear times or outright failure to kill in one beam. Kaguya is fairly easy to build. She benefits from her signature weapon, but when supporting Hush, can get similar results using a tier 5 4-star igniter. She works fine with no manifestations, but can benefit all the way up to manifestation 4. For logistics, she can use either Amarna or Zenye, but doesn't need any particular subset unless you're using Igniter, in which case she benefits from attack. Next, let's look at Shadow Ka. Shadow Ka also only needs to use her support skill. It's not quite as quick as Kaguya, but can still be completed within the 2 second delay window. It also has the added benefit of giving you a stationary target to hit, which can be very useful depending on the boss. Shadow Ka's support skill lasts for 10 seconds at first, and is extended by about 4 seconds at Manifestation 3. This is slightly better uptime than Kaguya, but it is based on Shadow Ka's health, so you'll have to work a bit to see the benefit. 14 seconds is often enough to finish off a boss, but you will see significant damage drop if it survives longer. Shadow Ka requires some investment to build. She needs her signature weapon for best results. You can use the 4 star wave, but you may then lack the damage to kill some bosses before her support skill ends. She needs to reach Manifestation 5 to maximize her damage contribution. Her logistics should be a Marna or a Zenye with HP substats. Finally, let's look at the cup. Etchel needs to use her ultimate skill to support Hush instead of her support skill. This results in a significant startup delay, usually about 6 seconds. Etchel's buff lasts at maximum strength for at least 10 seconds and up to 20 seconds, depending on how much energy you spend on it. However, the decay at 10 seconds is not very impactful compared to the overall buff. The overall buff will last for your entire beam. Etchel takes considerable work to build. You will need her signature weapon and attack and alignment index substats on her Lux Squad logistics. She also benefits from having heal bonus on the third line of her logistics, which can take precious resources to get. She needs to reach Manifestation 5 to maximize her damage contribution, but her overall damage is slightly higher than the other options at 15 seconds, and much higher thereafter. Just an editing note here, if you use Etchel without using her ult, just without using her support skill or anything, she will still be slightly better than Acacia Kaguya. Effectiveness in combat varies based on height difference. When we look at a damage graph, it's clear that all three choices are very close up to the 12 second mark. When we factor in build difficulty, they're all roughly even. However, the further we push beyond 12 seconds, the further Etchel pulls ahead. 
To get a clearer picture, let's look at how many seconds lasting flame needs to fire to reach specific health breakpoints with absolutely maxed out operatives. Keep in mind, this is just the length of time you need to ult to kill these bosses. On a boss like Will Anderson, Etchell has a 6 second startup time compared to 2 seconds for Kaguya and Shadow Cop, so she may have a slower run, even though she kills faster. However, on bosses like Joseph Hardened or Nemec, it is not possible to start beaming immediately, so startup time doesn't matter. Depending on how long your ult needs to last, which will be determined both by the boss's health and your damage level, you may need to delay the start of your ult to ensure you don't run out of energy prematurely. Because of this, Etchell's startup delay is not as painful in practice as it is on paper. If we consider a hypothetical 5 million HP boss, Kaguya and Shadow Ka are unlikely to be able to gather enough energy to sustain an ult and still finish within the 25 second time limit imposed by Tess the Magician. There's no clear winner in the end. If you want the fastest neural simulation times right now, Shadow Ka is your best bet if you're well and can kind of jumpstart your team. If you want to quickly put a team together with a relatively low investment, Kaguya is the best option. If you want to optimize your damage and in future proof your team as best you can, choose Etchel. Also, while Kaguya and Shadow Ka both have significant damage drop-offs if your beam goes too long, Etchel is much more forgiving. So if your team is on the weaker side, you will be able to first kill a boss with Etchel before you can kill it with Shadow Ka and Kaguya. This is the sort of video that is liable to get outdated quickly, so I'll revisit the topic here and there. But hopefully you're now better equipped to make long-term decisions about building your own team.